I'm going to talk about armies in the lab, studying conflicts and opinion dynamics, opinion clashes in Wikipedia. This is a summary of the work that I've been doing uh, during the last four years in collaboration with many people uh, from Budapest University of Technology when I was doing my postdoc, including Janusz, who is here, uh, and also Harald and Kimo from Finland, uh, Maxi San Miguel from Mallorca, who is also here, Anselm Spori from Rutgers, and Mark Graham from Oxford Internet Institute, where I am located now at the moment. Yeah, I actually uh, have a stolen armies in the lab from a rather old paper in 1969 by Maurice uh, Zeldich, uh, who asked, can you really study an army in the laboratory? So the paper, which is very nice, is about how we could use uh, uh, applied sciences or natural sciences methods to understand uh, conflict and uh, wars and these kind of uh, clashes among uh, human societies. Uh, of course, conflict has been around for a very long time. Uh, it's very difficult to study using natural sciences uh, for many reasons. One, it's very difficult to have a control experiments and to do it in a lab and to collect every data, all the transactional records. There are a few cases like the Pira case that we've been exposed to in the morning that you could, of course, interview those people and try to collect all these interaction data, but you could only do it after you have arrested all of those uh, terrorists. Uh, you cannot do it in real time, of course. And the other problem with that is that you cannot repeat that. Uh, in, in natural sciences, we love to repeat the experiments a thousand times, but you cannot do the period thing or the second world war, for example, again and again. That would be very difficult. And also, we are very much into universalities uh, in, in natural sciences. Uh, it's difficult to kind of generalize the results that you get from Pira case to other countries. Uh, and conflict is something universal. If we want to make theories about that, we need a kind of global data set. So it's quite disappointing, isn't it? However, there is something called Wikipedia, which I'm sure you all know about it, which kind of provides all these ingredients that we need to do a kind of natural science study on conflict and collaboration. So you, you definitely know Wikipedia is written by individuals from all around the world, volunteers, who are not necessarily professionals. Uh, it's been growing very fast. Recently it has started to decline, which is also a nice story. Uh, however, this, this article production hasn't been always uh, peaceful. There are a lot of opinion clashes, of course. When you think about it, you put people together and ask them to talk about something about religion or about their country, where they are very much fanatic about it. Uh, you might expect some conflicts, and actually it happens a lot. There are uh, a lot of so-called edit wars or editorial wars among editors of different language editions. Uh, the good thing about Wikipedia is that you, we have all these records. Everything is very well recorded, all the revisions of the articles the interactions between editors, et cetera, et cetera, all the guidelines and policies and how they have been changing over time. We have the armies in a lab, but the problem is that uh, the VAR is very much messy. I didn't expect the sound. Um, this is, by the way, International Pillow Fight Day in Budapest 2010. Uh, this is a kind of lab experiment. It's just for fun. I, I skip over it, sorry. Um, as you could see, it's very messy, even though the rules are very simple. Grab a pillow and hit someone. Uh, but it has a very rich dynamic, which makes it very interesting. I was standing there for like a few hours watching those people. Um, so uh, Wikipedia, I don't have a movie of Wikipedia of us, but they, they are more or less similar in terms of complexity. So to, to get an essence of this, we need to do a lot. We've been lucky because there is something called revert uh, in Wikipedia, it's a built-in feature. Um, this is the history of the article. Each line is a revision. Uh, everyone could see it for all the articles. And if for some reason you don't like a version, specifically the latest edit on, a ver on an article, you could simply revert it back to the previous version by clicking on that button, undo. And it's a built-in feature to, to kind of prevent vandalism where people just come and put something silly in an article or delete the article uh, completely. So you could immediately revert it back to the previous version, 
But people are using this feature actually to fight and to pursue their own opinions against other editors. Technically, it's been very useful for us because each revert is an interaction, very traceable interaction from one editor to another editor, and we have the timestamp of that. Uh, this is how a revert looks like. Uh, someone has added a yet second middle name for Bush. The other person doesn't like it, it reverts it back to the previous version. So we have a kind of very well-defined interaction. Not all the editorial wars are happening <coughs> through the reverts, but it's a very good proxy for, for the editorial wars. So you could build a network. This is how the network looks like for the article are anarchism. This is one article. The nodes are editors and the links are uh, the reverts within them. The thicker they are, the more reverts uh, have been done between these two editors. You could see some people spend their lives just reverting others. <laughs> and there are these big nodes. Uh, and then there is a bunch of other editors who have reverted or got reverted uh, a couple of times. Well, it's complex, well, complex networks. It's antisocial because usually in social networks, two people are connected if they like each other. Here, people are connected if they hate each other. So therefore, you don't see many triangles, actually, which is a very much feature of social networks. And of course, it's a temporal network. What you see is the latest snapshot, but it starts from zero and adds up as the time goes. So we wanted to kind of quantify this. It took us almost a year. I'm not going to repeat that story for you. But at the end, we uh, came up with a measure of controversy M, which measures how much war, how much editorial war has been uh, happening on a single article. OK? Uh, if you buy it from me, then you could use this to kind of order the articles based on their controversial, controversiality measure in different language editions, uh, which looks like this. These are the top 10 most controversial articles in different language editions. For instance, in English, George W. Bish has been the most controversial article ever, followed by anarchism, Muhammad, and then global warming, circumcision, United States, Jesus, race and intelligence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The list goes down. And if you look at it at uh, different languages, like in German, French, you could see some similarities. Like Jesus has been controversial almost in all the languages. But also there are some local features, like in Spanish Wikipedia, uh, you see a lot of debates on football clubs and sport, which is kind of religion, again, also in that language. <laughs> in Czech Wikipedia, for example, a lot of articles, or controversial articles, are about sex, gender issues, which is also, again, a kind of local uh, feature. You could do it more systematically. We have categorized the top 100 most controversial articles based on the topic. Uh, for these different languages. Well, we were lucky to get a coverage on The Economist on that. Um, so each color here corresponds to one category of articles. Uh, you could see, for example, in, in lower barrier in Middle Eastern languages like Persian, Arabic, and Hebrew politics is quite dominant among controversial topics. I mentioned the sport in the case of Portuguese and Spanish, and in Chinese and Japanese, uh, Wikipedia, you see a lot of discussion about film industry, television, high school music bands, manga, and those kind of things. OK, this is nice. Uh, of course, you could map it as well. Many of those articles are about geographical places, blue, actually. Uh, and also, other articles which are about football clubs, you could also put them on a map, because a football club has a location. Um, so you could map it for different languages. Here, each dot is an article, and the size and the color is uh, proportional to the amount of controversy. In Chinese Wikipedia, you could see it's very much local. They only care about Chinese-related topics. It's not the case uh, in Spanish Wikipedia, for example. Well, it's more global, of course, uh, in Spain and also in South America. But for example, Israel also is very controversial in that language. And uh, this is the Arabic language. Well, this is not only nice and you know, um, interesting in terms of visualization, but also it tells us some stories. This data has been uh, fetched in 2010. And if you look at, for example, in Arabic Wikipedia, uh, Algeria, Egypt, Syria, 
and uh, Tobruk, which is a, a city in Libya, all of them have been very controversial already in 2010. And I'm sure you know uh, what uh, Arab Spring is, which started almost a year after. So I'm not trying to make a very strong <laughs> statement, but there are signals among all these noises that we could see in Wikipedia. So if you want to predict what when and where is going to be the next, for example, social unrest, this might be something that we want to look at. This was more about the social part of it. As I mentioned, this network is growing and this controversy measure therefore is a dynamic parameter. It also changes over time. Uh, if you look at how it changes over time, we have been able to categorize all the controversial articles in three categories. The first one, the green one, are basically the editorial words which end to a consensus. The war starts, it increases, and then after a while, everyone is happy with the outcome. Uh, I'm sorry about the color, but the example I'm showing here is about a bombing, a Dresden bombing in 2000, in Second World War, which is something has happened quite a long ago. <coughs> there are, of course, debates about it, but after a while, there is no new information, nothing about it, so people leave it as it is when they get to the consensus. In the middle, you see Japan, which is a live uh, thing, and there are always new things about it. So we have a spikes of editorial wars. And then uh, in the red, you see like anarchism or George Bush or USA, topics which are live and people get more information about them on a daily basis, but they are very much controversial. So this curve never gets to a plateau like, so there is no uh, stop in a war ever. So we call this last category never ending wars. So this was all about the empirical analysis we have done, but we are physicists, we have been physicists, we are still, um, though I'm working in social sciences division. Uh, so we, are, we were interested in modeling things. So we started with a very simple agent-based model. Uh, I try to sketch the model quite briefly here for you. We have N editors. Uh, we use an opinion dynamic model. Each editor has an opinion which, ha which is a simple uh, one, like a scholar parameter between zero and one. Well, I know social scientists hate this, uh, but physicists love this, so that's okay. Uh, we have N editors. They are described by this opinion value. Uh, we have a fixed pool of them. N is constant. They could interact to each other. Uh, we adopted a model uh, within the class of bounded confidence model introduced by Defon et al. in 2010. Uh, in which the interaction between two agents uh, is described as the following. So we randomly choose two agents, they meet. Uh, if their opinion value, xi and xj, is a smaller, the difference is a smaller than a threshold value, they talk to each other and they get to a consensus somewhere in between. So for the sake of simplicity, in our model, they get into the middle point. However, if they find each other, the difference is larger than the threshold, they totally disagree, so they don't even talk. They live without any modification to their opinion. So intuitively, it's quite a good model. They are very simple. How about Wikipedia? In Wikipedia, there is a third uh, component, and that's the article, the common product that people want to produce together. Uh, without it, could have a very important role because if you ask people to do something together, it's quite different to when they just talk to each other and exchange opinions. So we have an article, it's also described by a parameter A, takes a value between zero and one, but the way the editor and the article interact is a bit different. So again, the person checks the article. This time, if the person finds the article very different from its own opinion, then it edits it, changes it, and pulls the value, pulls the article towards him or herself. Whereas if the article is closer to, to, the, to its own opinion, below the threshold, then it doesn't change the article. It's okay, I can uh, stay with that. However, by reading the article, maybe I move a bit towards the article. So I adopt the opinion reflected in the article. Again, very simple way of interacting. 
OK, that was the model. Let's see what comes out. What you see here is the result of the original model without the article, just agents. Uh, based on this threshold parameter, uh, you might get uh, a consensus in the middle. If everyone is quite tolerant. After a while, there is one group. Everyone stays at the same opinion. If they are not tolerant enough, we get a kind of segregation between two groups. So the number of groups at the end uh, is proportional to 1 over the amount of the tolerance. But the thing is that it very soon reaches to the steady state, and nothing happens afterwards. OK, when you add the article, however, the following emerges. Uh, in all, depending on the parameters, mu a, mu a was the amount that I changed the article if I don't like it. Depending on that, you get different uh, scenarios. In all of them, you get to consensus. Even if you had started from a case that you had three isolated groups of people that they wouldn't talk to each other anymore in the original model, in this model, they get to the consensus just by producing this common product together. So the take home message one, if you want people to, to agree to each other after a while, ask them to do something together. Well, as far as the model suggests. Um, I'm uh, skipping over the differences between these three regimes, but uh, it's interesting mostly from the physical point of view. But there is also still something missing in here. If you remember, I showed you cases where you never get to consensus. The model doesn't replicate that. In the model, you anyway get to a consensus. So there are ingredients are still, are still uh, missing in the model, one being uh, agent renewal. We remember we had a fixed pool of editors. In real case, the editor's pool is not very uh, static in Wikipedia. People join the pool. Many people leave after a while. Uh, so it's, it has a dynamic. And of course, when new people come to Wikipedia pool of editors, they might have new opinions. And they might not be happy with the current version of articles. So we have introduced that in a model. And uh, the longest story short, we have been able, by tuning the parameters, to replicate those three categories that I have described. This single cons var consensus cycle, the stepwise behavior, like Japan, and the never-ending vars. So what you see in the upper row is Wikipedia, the real data. And what you see in the lower case is the results of the simulation. So again, our model was very simple. Probably social scientists would laugh at it, but it could pre uh, produce the real observations. What is good about it, uh, and that's the following. We could tune the model to the real case, taking the data, find the proper parameters, and then we could let the model run to predict what's going to happen next month or next year. So this is a good thing about it, that this very simple model enables us to predict uh, the future. Uh, so, back to the introduction that I gave, that would be extremely helpful if you could predict when and where is the next VAR, I suppose. Um, and then this is like the last piece of that result for those of you who are interested in phase transitions. Depending on the parameters, one being this renewal case, a renewal rate, and the other one the tolerance uh, level, you get uh, three phases, actually. One being the peaceful case, up left, the VAR case, down right, and the border between these two phases is that stepwise behavior we had in the middle. And interestingly, you could go from peace to VAR by increasing this renewal rate, changing the editors more often. You could go, of course, also again from piece to var by reducing the tolerance of editors and, or the article. And we have checked this is a real physical phase transition. It's not just a crossover. There are modifications to the model. Uh, there are a lot of heterogeneity that we haven't included in the model. The model was quite flat. There are temporal char characteristics. Edits come in bursts, whereas in a model, uh, we had a kind of continuous uh, metric of time. And also, there are a lot of agency and group formation, uh, which I have an example for. This is the talk page of Wikipedia article on Safavid dynasty. This is a dynasty in 
current Iran-Turkey region. And it's a very much disputed topic because Turks say they have been Turks and Iranians says they have been Persian. If you look at this here, there are two big guys. So the color of the note is the uh, nationality of the editor, which we have uh, extracted by hand. Um, the arrows are the conversations and the color of the arrow is the sentiment of that, whether it's positive or negative. So there are two big guys, uh, one red there and one blue here, and they talk to each other, attacking each other all the time. And there is a bunch of other people, like the red ones here, who are in the back supporting the leader, attacking the blue guy. And also the blue guy has his friends over there attacking the red guy. So there are a lot of uh, uh, leader-follower relationship in here. Again, we, that was missing in the model, and we, we, we are sure it's a very important thing to, to consider. Uh, it was the, all about it. We, we have a couple of publications, and we've been lucky to, to be covered in lots of uh, different uh, press. Some of these stories are very funny. You could find all of this in my web page if you're interested. I think by this, I thank you. Did you think about developing a strategy uh, for winning edit wars based on your work? Uh, actually, we were not that interested in winning the edit wars. We were interested in avoiding editorial wars. And yeah, we have suggestions. For example, freezing the war for a while or reducing the number of editors, uh, because you remember this renewal process was a kind of fuel for the war. So if you freeze, do not let new people come, um, so the article might get to a consensus. And a couple of other suggestions. Interestingly, most of those suggestions have been already implemented in Wikipedia without having this knowledge by the community itself. So by experiments, experience, they have kind of uh, come up with this idea. Some of the suggestions are new and we are very well uh, communicating with Wikipedia uh, community of editors and might be they, they adopt some of these suggestions. Uh, considering that the rate of new editors in Wikipedia is decreasing, does that mean that are we going to a time of peace in Wikipedia? In, in an, are we going to an era of peace because of that? Yeah, I suppose when everyone has left, there is no one to, <laughs> to fight. Uh, this is a naive interpretation of what you said, but yeah, I guess so. Because, actually not, well, I, I have to correct myself, because uh, the core of many of these wars are just a few very dedicated editors who might not live that soon. So it depends whether this decline is homogeneous among all the editors or uh, more peaceful editors are leaving sooner, which I, sub I hope it's not the case. But that might happen, actually. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I must think about it. Yeah. I think there was one question over there. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, so when we did a s we did study of the length of real wars and the distribution of that, and we found that um, um, it's a very strange thing. It can be, you know, with a very asymmetric two sides, you can actually have very, very long equivalent of your edit wars. Have you, and I think it would be something worth looking at, have you looked at the duration? I know they're bursty within, but w the ones that have a finite duration, have you looked at the length of the war um, com and, and then related it to something about the number of editors on each side? Well, actually, uh, that's a very good question, and we thought about it. However, there are policies in Wikipedia which kind of controls the VAR. Uh, if the VAR is going for a very long period, some people from higher levels interfere and they try to kind of settle down everything. Uh, even consider, I mean, even if there is uh, these policies, but w what we could see was that this distribution of the burst period in terms of the length in time is also distributed very uh, fat tail. So there are very long periods, few of them, many short ones, 
And it's surprising because there, there shouldn't be something like that. As I said, there are policies to avoid very long bars, but they exist. Mm 